This is All India Radio. The news read by Meenuti Chatterjee. Highlighting the grim situation in Kaveri Basin, External Affairs Minister S.M. Krishna today appealed to the Prime Minister Manmohan Singh to stop further release of water to Tamil Nadu and seek a report from the team that has been deputed to assess the water situation. Meanwhile, the Central Study Team, on its second day of visit for assessing the water situation, today interacted with the farmers of Thiruva Road District in Tamil Nadu and heard the grievances of the Delta farmers regarding water supply for Samba cultivation. Earlier, they undertook an aerial study in Harai Angi, Kabini and Hemawati catchment area. Peaceful protest marches were also held in Mandya and Mysore districts with farmers resorting to Rasta Roko in Srirangapattana and Gajalagere in Mandya district, hotbed of the stir. In the meantime, the dawn to dusk Karnataka band called by Kannada outfits to protest the release of Kaveri water to Tamil Nadu today disrupted normal life in Bangalore and the river basin districts. Schools and colleges remained closed. Some persons who had come to the, visit the city were seen stranded at railway stations and bus stands as buses and even auto rickshaws remained off the roads. The Karnataka government began releasing 9,000 cusacks of water to Tamil Nadu following the Supreme Court's order. Home Minister Sushil Kumar Shinde is visiting Jammu and Kashmir and Punjab from today to review the security situation in the forward areas along Indo-Pakistan border. This will be the first visit to the two border states as Home Minister. According to a Home Ministry official during the two-day tour, the Home Minister will visit forward border guarding posts in Leh, Kargil and Atari Waga and interact with Jawans and officers. He will also take stock of the security situation along the border and hold review meetings with senior officers of Indo-Tibetan Border Police Force and Border Security Force. The recently cleared infrastructure debt fund will be based on a tripartite agreement between developer, lender and the IDF. The aim is infusing greater funds into infrastructure development in the country. Finance Ministry officials said in New Delhi, loans by the banks would be refinanced by IDF so that the lenders have free funds for more lending. The requirement of infrastructure fund in the 12th plan, 2012-17, to has been pegged at $1 trillion. Noting that terrorism cannot be justified by any cause or grievance, India has asked UN member states to expand enforcement efforts to destroy safe havens and terrorist support networks, besides evolving a counter-narrative to combat radicalization. Speaking at the 11th meeting of the heads of special services, security agencies and law enforcement organizations at the UN, India's ambassador to the UN and chair of the Counter-Terrorism Committee, Hardeep Singh Puri, said, the success in the fight against terrorism goes hand in hand with progress in strengthening counter-terrorism cooperation and exchange of information at the international, regional and sub-regional level. A 100-member Bangladesh youth delegation is visiting India from today as part of the government of India's policy to further strengthen people-to-people contact and exchanges between the two countries. During the week-long tour, the delegation will visit New Delhi and Kolkata and call on the President Mr. Pranab Mukherjee. Earlier addressing the members of the team in Dhaka on Thursday, India's High Commissioner to Bangladesh, Mr. Pankaj Saran, hoped that the tour will help them get a better understanding of India and also help in building bridges of friendship between the two neighbouring countries. The West Indies showcased an all-round performance last night to storm into the ICC 2020 Cricket World Cup final, beating Australia by a massive 74 runs in the second semi-final at Colombo. The West Indies will take on host Sri Lanka in the final of the competition at 7pm tomorrow. Global James Bond Day was celebrated yesterday to mark 50 years since the world premiere of Dr. No, which introduced author Ian Fleming's sophisticated secret agent to the people. The franchise went on to produce best-selling agent 007 films. It is making legends out of actors over the last 50 years, and the James Bond movie franchise have made heart-stopping thrillers. And that is the end of this news bulletin.